Latte Gavin. Amen. God bless you. Now he has to get to Raleigh Durham Airport, so you're going to see them sweep him off. So he's not being disrespectful. We already talked. And if he was just going back to Somerville, he could get on 95. But he got to go some other places. So let's give God praise for the man of God worshiping, pouring out, and giving us some wonderful truths about the reality of the state of the church today. And we will not miss the generation. We will reclaim the generation as we lift up Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He'll be back. Don't worry about it. He's going to be back real soon. And if we call on him again and somebody else got him booked, it's just going to supernaturally cancel. Amen. And he'll be back with us. Give God praise one more time. And we thank God. Turn your Bibles to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians. The book of Philippians. And for the sake of time today not to rush the word but to be able to stay within our guidelines we are going to use just two verses verse 10 and 11 verse 10 and 11 Philippians 3 Philippians 3 I guess y'all were supposed to get the chapter by the spirit since I didn't say it amen Philippians 3 whether you got a KJV, NRSV, BRT. No screens today, so just pull it up on your phone. Don't make your smartphone a dumb phone. Amen. Philippians 3, verse 10 and 11. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I want to live for a subject today. I didn't realize it came with all of this. I didn't realize it came with all of this. I speak, Lord, to serve it here with your people are ready for your word. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Destroy yokes, but build up your people that we might be able to call upon you and somebody might be saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I didn't realize it came with all of this. We have become an order society, whereas we're ordering stuff all the time. I am with no exception. I let my fingers do the walking through my phone and purchase stuff. It's, if your house is like mine, uh, there are more boxes on your front porch than birds in the trees. <laughs> you never know when they're going to come. And, and a few days ago, I ordered... Uh, something for my wife. I wanted to get her a, a, a foot massage tub. I wanted her to be comfortable at that, so that she might be able to, to, to be able to relax at home and be able to pamper herself. I ordered it with earnest expectation that it would be there like that because that's what the order said it was going to come. The problem was boxes came and my wife, my wife saw my name was on it so she said you got some boxes in there you might want to open. I was excited, and I wanted to be able to give her the present she didn't know about. I opened it, and it had Epsom salt, and then it had foot scrub. I said, wait a minute, hold on, that ain't what I ordered. I, I, I understand why this is here, but for some reason, Sister Smith, I couldn't understand why the tub won't there. My wife said, what's that? I said, ain't nothing, it ain't nothing, it ain't nothing, uh, it, it's just something that I ordered. Brother Barry also, I went on a couple of days and didn't find my foot tub. And I said, somebody done made a mistake. You're going to send me my foot tub. You can have your Epsom salt and your scrubbing stuff, but I, I want my foot tub. So I contacted customer service. You can't talk to nobody today. Ain't nobody going to talk to you. So you got to chat with her. Do you want to open a chat? No, I want my foot tub. But I opened the chat with the customer service agent. I don't know if it was male or female. Didn't matter. Just give me my foot tub. So he said, what seems to be the problem? I said, the problem is I ain't got my foot tub. What's your order number? I showed them what my order number was. They said, yeah, I see where you ordered a foot tub. But the lady said something, or the customer service person said something in the chat that really messed me up. She said, go back to your original order while I'm on the phone. I went back to her original order. She said, what did you receive? I said, Epsom salt and foot scrub. She said to me, now hit the bottom tab. That's something that says more under your original order. 
Brother Drawhorn, when I hit it, it says also includes Epsom salt and foot scrubbing pad. The lady said, if you would just wait one more day, your tub is going to be there. But we had to send what came with it before the original product got there. I said to her, I didn't know it came with all this. She said, sir, if you'd have just read the fine print, if you'd have just taken the time to see what you actually ordered, you'll find out that it was not enough for us to be able to just send you the tub. We had to send you the essence of what would be able to give her the pleasure of her foot scrub. That thing messed me up because I said to her, I didn't know it came with all of this. And I just believe that there's some people when it involves the resurrection, you don't know that it comes with all of this. That we want to get an Easter suit and have some bunny hops and talking about all that we're about to do. And it's another resurrection Sunday and we get sunrise and we get dinner, but we don't realize what comes with the resurrection. That a lot of people talking about Easter and understand there's nothing wrong with celebrating the day. But do you really know the power of the resurrection? Uh, Paul said, oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering. And when he's saying this, he's really saying, you don't know that what comes with this. A lot of people don't understand that, yes, Jesus paid the price, but there's a cost for the resurrection. There's a cost that, yes, he paid his physical life, and all of us have to be able to be in him to receive that. But a lot of times we don't know what comes with it because we think once we get saved, that's the completed end. That that's the end of the story. Like Brother Calante Gavin said, notice what he said, when he got saved again, oh, for real, the second time. He realized the severity of what it is to be in Christ Jesus. I believe we're missing a generation. It's not just his age generation, but it's some old cats that's missing it too. It's some younger cats and it's some, some seasoned cats that's out there that don't understand something that you can't play with God and God is real. There used to be an old song that real, real, Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, he give me the victory. Some people doubt him, but you can't make me doubt him because that's why I love him so he's so real to me. And maybe some of y'all don't understand that, but understand you don't know what comes with this. There is a measure of suffering that goes along with the resurrection. There, there's a measure of, of, of criticism that comes with the resurrection. There's a measure of going up and coming down because let me tell you something, just because the person beside you were worshiping and praising the Lord and shouting a little bit earlier, you didn't see the hell they went through all all year to be able to say this ain't no ordinary worship and if I got a couple of witnesses out there that know you've had some aches in your body you've had some stuff going on in your head there's been some things going on in your finances there's been some funniness in your family there's been some things that almost took you out but after you took time to look back over your life and think things over you can say my good days outweigh my bad days and I won't complain and I know some of y'all cute you that had your praise party up in here you sitting out acting like you got tree and carpets and got your finger up waiting for some biscuits to come but let me tell you something, the resurrection is here and when the resurrection gets here nothing else matters because I realized that it was the Lord that saved me it was the Lord that raised me, it was the Lord that picked me up and yes I've got to go through some hell and high water but who can thank God today that even though I'm being attacked on every side somehow I still got joy now let me tell you something, I'm going to preach whether you help me or not, I'm going to holler whether you want me to or not because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Somebody say, I didn't realize it came with all of this. You must understand something. Paul says this, and he's we're talking about the Apostle Paul. We ain't talking about somebody just came off the turnip truck. We ain't talking about somebody just showed up. Uh, Paul, powerful preacher of the gospel, and he finds himself in a situation where he's willing to lose everything just to be able to win Jesus Christ. He said, because until this point, everything that I have gained, I count it as all lost, that I may have more of him. And understand something, Paul is saying, I need to know. How can Paul 
being one of the hand-picked people of God. And he walked in a different time and season and being criticized for his resurrection in Christ Jesus because people had to sit there. Even Agrippa, he was almost persuaded. And even the people had to be able to question who he was in Christ Jesus. And let me tell you something. Some of y'all know you're bona fide saved again, but people question because they remember your then, but don't see your now. And let me tell you, you ought to thank that as a sign that if people don't know who exactly who you are right now and they question your Christianity, you ought to thank God because that means you were here when they knew you. They know you now and just hang around. You'll see what I'm going to become. How many of you know God ain't through with me yet and I'm a recipient of his resurrection? How many know that when he rose, I ain't worried about no Easter bunny. I ain't worried about no tomb because when they went and looked in the tomb, that tomb had already been vacated because Jesus rose for me. Somebody say, I didn't know it came with all this. Paul says that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering. But he says, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And there's a problem that we have here. Paul, in all of the pop and circumstance, you must understand something. He is no actor. He's a for real person. He's a Pharisee of Pharisees. But he says, I want to get closer to God. If you've experienced a, a, a resurrection, Reverend Frieda B. Me, Felica T. Honey, you got to understand something. If you have experienced a resurrection, you seek to be closer to God. You know how I can tell you know why I like this young man? Not because he got a nice voice, not because he can get octaves that ought to slap him in his face being able to hit. But you can tell that little young joker in 22 years been through some stuff that he's only able to verbalize through his testimony and his music. And how many of you know, I may not know every scripture. I might not know how to quote everything from scripture and verse. But let me tell you, I got a testimony. I got something I got to tell somebody. And is there anybody in here that say, I just want to know him a little bit closer. There used to be a song called Draw Me Nearer. Draw Me Nearer, uh, blessed Lord, to thy cross, to thy precious bleeding side. Draw me nearer because we understand there comes a time where I need to be closer to God and I think that's what's missing and coronavirus and COVID-19 has got us in a situation where the resurrection means even more because let me tell you we are out here shouting on the outside with a cool breeze under two tents when we got a perfectly good building sitting right there and there's some people that when they got that text that I was going for Easter they said I ain't been out all year but I'm going out today and some people say I wouldn't sit out there in that pilot. I wouldn't sit out there in that hot tent. I wouldn't sit out there and mess up my new clothes. But how many care? No, I didn't care if I had to wear a Speedo out here. I was coming out to give God glory because I didn't come to see nobody. I didn't come to impress nobody. I didn't come to get nobody's approval. But I want to know him. And see, let me tell you, when you have to know him, you want a power and a thirst with him. And how many people just want to get closer to him? And the problem is, many people don't want to get closer because you don't want to be exposed but let me tell you, if you ever get closer to him and walk in the power of his resurrection, number one, you will have intimacy without inconsistency. Because that's what Paul, that's what he was written. Preachers, that's what Paul wanted to do. He said, I want intimacy without inconsistency. Because let me tell you, when you don't believe in the power of the resurrection, Brother Manuel, what you will do is want to be only close to him on Sunday. You will only be close to him when people are looking at you. And how many of you value the resurrection enough to know that my walk with God does not allow me to compromise to have intimacy with inconsistency? See, there comes a time. See, some of y'all ain't come close enough to death yet. Some of y'all ain't come close enough to going down and being out. I remember we was at the Coliseum a few years ago at annual conference, and Sister Latanya Clark just sitting up here now. She didn't, I didn't know she was going to be here. She didn't know I was going to say this. And I remember when she had an aneurysm, aneurysm, two aneurysms sitting up there on stage and we didn't know what was happening so when she comes back in the church notice this she always had a passion for God but her testimony is different now her toy testimony is different and some of y'all are able to say I ain't had no aneurysm let me tell you something how about the aneurysm that should have happened that didn't happen how about the heart attack that should have happened that some of you had COVID and didn't even know it and God still let you hang around and it closes you because of
of his resurrection, I want to be closer to God. Let me tell you something. Uh, he said, I want to be closer. I want to know him. He said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. The only theologian could tell you this. There's a Greek word called gnosko. Gnosko means I want to be close to God. I don't only want to have educational knowledge. I want to have experiential knowledge. See, educational knowledge is good. But when you go through the experience of knowing who God is, see, let me tell you, ain't no books can help you like that. Now, ain't nothing wrong with going to get your education. But how many know can't nobody do me like Jesus? Can't nobody. When you become intimate with God without inconsistency, I want to know him to the point where I understand I want to experience him. See, the resurrection gives us the right to the tree of life and gives the opportunity to be born again. And by us being born again, we experience the fullness of who he is. Understand something? Paul was a heavyweight Christian. He was taught at the feet of Gamaliel and he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. But yet he talks to the church of Philippi, a church that he loved. And with all of this education, with all of this full access, notice this. He says, I want to experience God even more. Listen to what he says. I ain't got time to deal with one verse. He says, oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Now understand something. He could not be resurrected as Jesus was for our life. But he says, if I can get some of the droppings, if I can get some of the accoutrements, if I can just know him for who he is and why he rose for me. And you know why some people can't praise God? Because you don't know Jesus rose for you. And see, every now and then, you ought to just break out in a praise because God saved you and you didn't deserve it. How many of you know God knows he did stuff and you didn't deserve it. How many know you messed up many times, could have been gone, should have been dead and gone to hell, but God decided to pull you back. Let me tell you, I want you to look around at your neighbor one more time. Just look at him, just look at him. Look at him, look at him from head to foot, head to foot. Look at that other from head to foot. You ain't looking at nothing but a made up mess. That joker won't supposed to be here. Uh, I don't know what the day, what's the day? August the, the 4th, uh, uh, I just want to see if you were paying attention. April the 4th, 2021. See, let me tell you something. Some of you weren't supposed to make it here, but every once in a while, you ought to thank God because he rose. I was able to get up this morning. So I want intimacy without inconsistency. And let me tell you something. Now, you got to understand something. Paul was circumcised on the eighth day. And it says that he was from the tribe of Benjamin. But he was sitting there, and he was saying, all this stuff, I counted all as loss. Because while it is it's prudent for me to have it, for me to have the power of the resurrection, I'm not going to look at your pedigree and your resume. I'm going to look at your relationship. And understand on this Resurrection Sunday, we've got to check out our relationship. I didn't say check out your clothes and check out your hair. Check out your relationship. Because let me tell you something, I don't glorify COVID-19. But you know what? I bet you there's been more praying during COVID-19 than any other time. See, some of y'all don't want to admit that. Because what he's allowed us to do, and see, in a, when you start coughing, you start praying. When you start sneezing, you start calling on the name and pleading about because what he's done is because of his resurrection you understand it now watch this Paul from small is in a situation where I, I don't want you to think he's sitting up because he got these degrees and, and because he's a, a set at the feet of Gamal he's sitting around talking about other people notice what happened with Paul Paul is on house arrest it's easy to be able to talk about the goodness while you're out but Paul is on house arrest for being able to preach the gospel. And he's saying he's quarantined right now. And he's, he's subjugated to a point where he cannot get out. So therefore, he therefore has providentially, God has providentially placed some of us in a position of quarantine or put us in behind closed doors because he says, I want to know you. Because I was resurrected and you don't get the fullness of it. I got to put you in a place where you can sit your tail still long enough so I can get to you. Now, some of y'all can't handle that because let me tell you, I don't care if Georgia, Texas, and Florida is open back up. You better not open up too quick because you understand something. If people would open up to God the way they want to open up to go to a bar or club, then everything would turn around. And I want to tell you something more than opening up North Carolina. I want to open up Jesus in every place of the the world so people may know him so I need intimacy without inconsistency but understand this he says I want to know him in the power of his resurrection 
and in the fellowship of his suffering. So number two, he moves from intimacy without inconsistency, and he moves to intriguing antagonation. Intriguing antagonation. This is a problem. Notice what the text says. I ain't lost. In fact, no, he moves to intriguing instigation. Watch the way he instigates this. He says that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. But then he says in the fellowship of his suffering. It would seem suffering would come, then resurrection. Now you got to look at the deductive reason. He suffered on Friday. And he was able to rise and re ri resurrect this morning. But Paul says, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. Now the fellowship of his suffering. Which tells me he's instigating the fact that the point, I, if I don't have resurrection, I can't go through the suffering. Some of y'all missed that. I'm about to go to the house. See, because the problem is, if I get the suffering and I don't have his resurrection, I'm not going to be able to handle the things that God would have me to go through because if I'm not with God, I ain't got nothing. Lord, some of y'all missed y'all shout you right now. Because what he's trying to say is we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, and that's power. But how many know you can celebrate today, but hell might be coming tomorrow? That problems may be here next week, but because he rose with all power, I can get up too. Let me tell you something. You didn't get up because of your medicine. You didn't get up because of your doctor. You didn't get up because of your prayer partner. You got up because Jesus got up. And how many of y'all during this season has had some rough days and you didn't know it came with all of this? You got the job, but you didn't know it came with all of this. You got the promotion, but you didn't know it came with all of this. You got everything you thought you want, but somebody said, I didn't know it came with all of this. So let's understand something. He says the power, the power of his resurrection. And we sing a song, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Lay unto him the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. We want power, but don't want no sacrifice. And I want to tell you, they say no cross, no crown. And I know some of y'all don't understand that because somebody has erroneously told you all you got to do is shout, throw money up in the air, and your bills will be paid, and you'll never get sick. What a devil is a lie. Let me tell you something. Can I tell you? I believe that sometimes, family, that suffering is a part of my growth. If I didn't suffer, see, if I can't suffer with him, I can't reign with him. See, this is going to be a hard sermon. See, let me tell you something. Some of the people that's hollering right now, it's because they still suffering. They've had to suffer through some stuff. But he said, after you suffered for a little while, you will come through the fire, and you will come forth as pure gold. And if I got any folks up in here that cannot just praise God for the car, for the house, for the money, and the promotion, but can you praise God for the suffering? See, see, what, what did Paul Jones, I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and I've had some sleepless nights but when I look around and I think things over somehow my good days outweigh my bad days so I will not complain is there anybody up under this tent that don't mind giving God glory because I'm not going to complain because I understand something that I give intriguing instigation why is this instigation prove the point a preacher because understand something when he says fellowship of his suffering Fellowship means walking with. So what I need to do is need for him to walk with me through the situation. Because if God don't walk with me through it, I can't make it. And you know why I'm glad that he got up? You know why I'm glad of the resurrection over 2,000 years ago? I'm glad. But because while he got up, he says he's going to walk with me. And let me tell you something. Some of you are looking for God in a thunder boom, are looking for him to show up in, in a cloud somewhere. But can I tell you something? He's had goodness and mercy walking with you all the days of your life. He's had angels. Let me tell you, your angel ain't some little Tinkerbell angel. I'm tired of small faith folk walking around talking about I got a little bit of angel. Let me tell you something. I'm six foot three, 200 and so and so pounds. I don't need no Tinkerbell angel. I need some warring angels. I need some angels that will fight right there beside me. How many of you know that on some days you were supposed to be lost and out a long time ago? But Brother Sam, what he did, he let those angels, goodness and mercy, follow you all the days of his life. And when he got up, he says you have all power to tread over serpents and demons. And can I tell you something right now? Because of the resurrection, it says that with his stripes, we are already healed, which means we are healed through the blood of Jesus Christ, which means our souls are saved. 
But can I tell you also, he put healing power in there. That means that sometimes things were supposed to tear you up and attack you, but God let them stay right there and said, go not another further, because when I got resurrected, I said I am the resurrection and the life. And how many can thank God today that no matter what situation you in, you understand, I didn't realize it came with all of this. Paul says, I need the power of his resurrection. He says, I need the fellowship of his suffering. It's called quanonia. Quanonia means that I'm with him and he's with me. That means we're in a gathering place. Some people don't want a social distance. And the problem is you're insecure because you always need people around you. And social distancing is about mess you up because you need somebody always touching you, attending to you, being with you. And the problem is they really fake because they want what they can get from you rather than what they can pour into. See, I'm going to preach it till I'm finished because some of y'all don't understand that when I got the resurrection of Jesus Christ, people, if they are not authentic, I don't need them in my life. And what God is showing you is because he's a resurrection, he's with you all the way, every time you need. And let me tell you something, some of y'all got mad. I'm going to pick a pen and pop you right now because you're sitting out there saying I need for folk to like me. I need for folk to be around me. I need for folk to confirm me. I need for folk to approve me. But when God got up early that morning, he said if I got to walk with you by yourself, I got to talk with you by, see, let me tell you something. See, I'm sorry for folk who don't have God speak to them. Ma and Nana, folk don't understand what the praying folk know how to do. Because sometimes God is able to tell you stuff that folk can't understand. And how many of y'all got some things in your life you need to tell God that you can't tell nobody else. But sometimes God will sit with you in your car and talk to you. How many of y'all been in a situation where God started speaking to you and you was in your car and tears running down your eyes when you had to go back on your porch and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. And you said, God, speak to me. And I want to tell you, God is speaking to you right now because I didn't know it comes with all of this. And see, some of y'all are looking for the bishop to tell you, for the preacher to tell you. But let me tell you something. Don't ever negate the power of God in your life. As a child of God, as a blood-bought, fire-baptized child of God, you are worthy of the resurrection. And when the resurrection comes on your life, God will put unknown tongues in your mouth. And can I I tell you something, when we get, before we get back in that building, there's going to be a great outpouring of the gifts of the Spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost. Because what I've asked God is let us to be able to lay hands on sick and folks start to rise up. Let us be able to speak to devils and they got to flee on every side from the north, south, east, and west. And I double dog dare you that because of the resurrection right now, you start speaking the stuff in your life and telling it's got to get out of your way. Watch what happens in the text. He says that I may be unconformable. This is where the instigation comes from. Oh, he's instigating. He said that I may be conformable even to his death. I'm going to teach a Bible study on this week because y'all ain't getting this. Y'all, y'all tune in. Y'all tell Brother Anthony, you tell them all to tune in on this week because they're going to need this. Cause I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to deal with this whole chapter even being conformable to his death. Now, that's, that's, that's instigation. Because what you're saying is that I don't mind being in a death state like him, but I don't have the same power that he has. But he called me a joint heir. But because of his resurrection, I have the right, and I am now a royal priesthood and a holy nation. Watch this. So even if I'm conformable to his death, notice what he says. Even if I'm in that situation, I know it won't last forever, that God will raise me up. So death cannot hold me. And some of y'all miss it, but I'm going to hit you right in the back of the head down to the white meat, leave you on the parking lot, and God will resurrect you this evening when he get back. Uh, number three, you've got to have inconceivable, uh, in a, inconceivable inabilities. Inconce Watch this now. Inconceivable inabilities. Notice what he says, even being conformable to this death. And I want to read what it says here because of the resurrection. He says, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, there's a problem here. If I'm going to attain to the resurrection of the dead, that means I got to die. That means that's inconceivable. Because folk don't want to death. 
to die. So they don't want to deal with death. But watch what happened. He says that I may attain the resurrection of the dead. So if it's an inconceivable inability, it now becomes a possibility because of his resurrection. But because before he died and got up, when I died, I had to stay in the grave. Because understand, there was no resurrection. Watch what I'm saying now. Because if I didn't know it came with all of this, I'm saying I want to be able to know the power of the resurrection. I want to know his fellowship of suffering, even conforming us to the death, that I may receive the resurrection of the dead. So what he says is that I'm going to give you unconceivable uh, uh, in inabilities because what you are able to do, you can't do what I can do. So since I got up, when you die, if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, I've got another building of God, not made by hand, eternal in the heavens. Pastor, what does that mean for me? That means if I die during this season, if I die in 21 or 22, I may not have what I have now. But he says, because I got up, you got the right to everlasting life. Everlasting life starts right now on earth. And if you're saved, you've got eternal life. But he says, this body, this back, this situation has got messed up. That if you trust in me and you receive the resurrection of, of, of Christ, and you therefore will be resurrected from the dead, that one day when this life is over and you transition from this side to the other side, he says you're not going to have to go through any pain no more. He says, but I am come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. Somebody say, I didn't know it came with all of this. Let me tell you what happens with the resurrection. He says, if you put your trust in me and put your trust in not another, that I've gone away to prepare a place, that where I am, ye may be also. And how many of you know, I ain't staying around here, that when it's time for me to be able to go, God's going to raise me up. And can I tell you something right now? He's just not going to raise you up from dead situations and deadened up your body. He's about to raise you from a dead situation you're going through right now. And how many can confirm right now that was your word for this morning that God's about to raise you from something that you couldn't get out of yourself. Somebody said, I didn't know it came with all this. I stopped by to tell somebody on this resurrection Sunday morning that God is about to give you power from on high. And when he gives you this power from on high, you're going to be able to look at your hands and they look new. You're going to be able to look at your feet and they did too. And I want to announce today because Jesus got up, you're about to get up out of some stuff right now. And Paul says not only, not only that I have attained, for I have not attained, but I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I stop by to tell somebody that God didn't get up just for you to be able to floss and flex and talk about what you drive and, and what you got and where you're going. But I want to tell you that God is off an everlasting life. And how many can thank God for salvation right now and can thank God for the Holy Ghost right now because I didn't know that it came with all of this. And I want to tell somebody that the reason you're able to smile, holler, shout, and clap is because God gave you something you didn't earn. God gave you something that you were not able to do in yourself, but he gave you life everlasting. And you know what? Some of us are waiting for something to happen for us to give God glory. But can you just give God glory because he's God, because he got up, because of his resurrection power? That is the power of God that worketh within us. Stand to your feet, brothers and sisters. I know it came with all of this. Well, I stopped by to tell you that the foot tub came. And I got home, and my wife had already opened the box. Because I had to, I wanted her to, because I had to admit to her what was coming. She had it set up, sitting on the counter. I said, you use it yet? No, it's none of them new things. I ain't worked it yet. But trust me, I'm going to work it. She said, that's what the other stuff was for. I said, yeah. I didn't know it came with all of that. Notice they gave me the complete picture, uh, package when I was just trying to see the small picture. Because all I could see was the tub. I couldn't see the things that she needed to be able to make it work. Some of us don't realize that the resurrection of Christ did more 
than just allow us to be able to say it's Easter. That means no matter on earth, no person on earth can hold him down. He said, no man taketh my life. I lay it down. If I lay it down, I pick it up again. And if I be raised, you shall also be raised. And that's not just um, from, from, from earth to heaven. That's in your situation right now. I didn't know it came with all of this. How many didn't realize Christianity came with all it came with? How, how, how many of you realize having friends, you didn't know it came with all that? You didn't realize that promotion came with all that. If I knew then what I know now, whoo, child. And you know what? It's good that some of us didn't know because we'd have messed it up. Because we want Christianity by association. We want Holy Ghost by rubbing off. When he rose, all he said, all you got to do is ask. All you got to receive. And you receive. You got to receive. I want to ask you, have you received the resurrection? That means that I carry him in my heart. That I admit that I have sinned. That I, up until this point in my life, that I'm I, I, I've sinned against God. And then if you're not saved, you're saying, I repent and I need for him to come into my life. That I confess that he is Savior and that God has raised him from the dead. And I ask him to come into my life. And I receive him into my life and make my life brand new through Christ Jesus. And if you are out there and you know that you have not received the resurrection, understand this. If you say you saved and ain't received the resurrection, then you're not saved. Because you don't believe him to be the resurrection and the life. You've got to be born again. That's what it's all about. Do you not realize Easter is all about salvation? He took away the crimson stain. And he washed us. Even when we didn't deserve it. While we were yet sinners, he still loved us. And if you're out here, if you're in this congregation right now and you're not saved, I invite you to come get saved. I know we ain't done this in a year and a month. But if you come up here, I'll lead you to Jesus Christ. If you know you're out there and you're not saved, you need to receive the resurrection. Pastor, I received it. I came to church. Yeah, but did you ask him to come in your heart? If you out there know you're not saved, you can get saved right here on this parking lot. For this is the church. This tent is the church. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty and peace. One of my preachers will go down. Is there anyone else who wants to come give your life to Christ? If you're here and know you're not saved and want to get saved, I invite you to come. Come give your life to Jesus Christ. If you're here not saved and want to get saved, just come right now. Y'all give us about 6.6 .6 minutes and we gone. If you're here not saved, I invite you to come. If you're out there watching me virtually and you want to get saved, all you've got to do is, remit, is admit I'm a sinner and I've sinned against God. And I repent of my sins. And I want to acknowledge the fact that Jesus is Lord. And I accept and know the fact that God has been raised from the dead. And I believe him to be my savior. Ask him to come into your heart. And he will save your soul. So if you are out there and you prayed that prayer, call us at the number on the screen. And we'll be more than glad to be able to welcome you to the body of Christ and pray with you. If you, let, let me say this real quick and we're going to go. Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. If you're here and not saved, come. If you're here and not saved, don't let this opportunity pass you by. If you're here and not saved, just come give your life to Jesus Christ. And you can call 855-979-9804. Those who are out there, you can call 855-979-9804. 
And if you're here and want to get saved, you can come. Let's give God praise for our sister who's receiving Jesus Christ. It's time for us to go from this place, but never from God's holy and righteous presence. We thank God for each and every one of you. Let's give God praise for the resurrection today. Jesus Christ is our Redeemer. God bless each and every one of you, and thank you for being with us today. Those who are watching us virtual and those that are in person. When we leave this place, I'm going to ask you to do this because we're going to continue to follow our social distance outline. Everybody just wave real quick to everybody. And we're not going to conjugate here. We ain't going to spread no germs or nothing else. We're just going to walk away and go on to our car and walk in the resurrection. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, present us false for his throne and glory with exceedingly great joy to our Father and God, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power. Let the redeemed of the Lord sing together. Have a wonderful day.